It's been a while. It's been a whole off season. We've oh, been yeah. dark this off season. That's what they call it. In it's the, the bit. quiet it's before the storm. Yeah. Everybody says, why does your podcast go dark in the off season? And I say, that's not nice. Lofa is a bright and cheery guy all the time. <laughs> Who is everybody? <laughs> Everybody, Lofa, everybody, every Seahawk fan, everybody in the PNW, everybody across the NFL is always wondering when the Take 12 podcast and Brett and Lofa will be back. Wait no longer, everybody. Here we are. First leave. cold open of the season. Woo. Oh, yeah. Always leave them wanting more. That's what I say. Hey, speaking of cold opens, our man's got a Pilsner out there, everybody. Yes. You can try. <laughs> the crowd's going wild. Uh, the 51 Savage, Savage Brewing Company, the 51 Savage Pilsner. It's out now. Uh, well, Lofa, you, I mean, tell us all about this thing. You got your own Pilsner. It's out and people can get it. My own Pilsner? Mm -hmm. Directed my own commercial? <laughs> I was going to get there. I was going to start <laughs> oh, with the beer. Then we were going to move on to how you're going to take over Hollywood. Oh, no, I mean, it just all kind of happened organically, right? I was, yeah. I was doing one of, uh, during the off season because we don't record every day, you know, mm -hmm. other stuff that me and Brett and Katie and everybody else and Ryan does. And mm -hmm. so, uh, I was helping out a buddy with a TV show, uh, master plan TV, shout out Dan, uh, Ellen and, uh, Rachel and Maddie Shaps who put the commercial together, but we were just doing one of our episodes. And they were like, get some behind the scenes stuff going. And mm -hmm. I was like, fuck, man. I don't... Okay. So I just start, start recording. Right. And I was just, we were at the bar, side hustle tap, tap room. And uh, I just go down the handles. I was like, we got all these beers for you guys to try. And then I just stopped at Savage mm -hmm. because I am a savage. And I was <laughs> like, I said, I was like, why would anybody drink anything else? Is right. literally what I said. And so they saw it and they reached out and they were like, you know, come by and we'll mm -hmm. make you a beer because I joked about I was wanting my own beer. Right. It wasn't a joke. It was it was me putting things out into the universe. Yeah, and... Since you're since you arrived at USC, you've been putting this out there. Loaf loafa to two beers, right? Loaf two brews. To, oh, sorry, loafa to two brews uh from back in the day. And and but this finally happened. The yeah. 51 and, Savage. You know, when everyone does one, a savage does two. That's where <laughs> to two brews came from. <laughs> Uh, but it is a tasty Pilsner, as you were mentioning, um, cause you know, some people can't handle the IPAs. I, you know, I can't, yeah. IPA is just too heavy for me. Sometimes. You know, I know it doesn't sound very savagely, but, um, you know, trying to, trying to make it an all day thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, it's and, summertime uh, out there, you know, you play in all the golf tournaments, you, you know, you IPAs are delicious, but if you're out there in the sun, baking yeah. away, sometimes a little heavy, but we do have a potential double IPA called loaf of the two brews. Oh, know? there we go. <laughs> we're back. Baby. <laughs> so double we're going to bring it full circle. I love it, dude. I love uh, it. But yeah, Savage Brewing in Kirkland, you can get it. Uh, they just signed with the distributor, so it'll probably be, hopefully, all over the state um, in the next couple of weeks to, to month. And uh, yeah, it's just a, a collab that's been hilarious, and it's helped me tap into my other creative interests. Yeah, As exactly. you were mentioning. The See, commercial. That's why we go dark in the off season so we can do this other stuff, you know? And yeah, yeah, totally, man. Uh, 51 Savage, it's out there. Now, where can people get it? Right now at the tap room, only for the next two weeks, and then they're distributing um, through uh, through the distributor. Just pick them up. I, Great. Well, where is the Savage Brewing tap room though? It's in Kirkland. Right yes. at Savage Brewing. You guys can look it up. Go find it, and then this will be in stores and all that stuff. Check out all of our social medias, and I'm sure Lofa's social media, and he'll be updating everybody on Savage brewing and of course the 51 savage pilsner which is out there right now and it is delicious i tried it personally producer katie yeah. has tried it we were sampling it at the golf tournaments we were playing in and, and it's awesome so there you go cold open number one for the season shall we officially start off this year with our awesome theme song do it <laughs> Here we go. Take 12. 
Walk around the club, unapologetic from the club. And no politics in this club, just dirt from the streets and the clips in the mud. Best podcast for the Seahawks, number one sports talk. Yeah, we got it on live. Every episode, 12 hot takes. Every rapper for Seattle, my place. the Take 12 podcast on the Believe NFL football sports extravaganza network. Thanks for tuning in. Whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on a podcast app, perhaps streaming along on Twitch. I'll be one of your hosts, Brett Davern, born and raised in Seattle, Washington. And your other host is that man right there. Seahawks, all pro linebacking legend Lofa to Tupu in the house. What's happening? Welcome to the brand new season of the pod. So much in store this season for you. Not just talking about, of course, our favorite team, the Seahawks, but I mean, we're traveling. We got parties, we got tailgates, we got beers coming out, all kinds of fun stuff this season. Um, announcements right off the top. Uh, Some of our beautiful, lovely, wonderful sponsors and supporters have come back this season. Uh, We already were talking about some of them there, but uh, Wiener Schnitzel, who who has, I'm just going to say has been here the whole time, even though they haven't. It seems like they have been. (laughs) They have. (laughs) Dom and the family and the team over at Wiener Schnitzels of uh, the PNW are back again. Two locations, Everett and Fife. They came back to us because you guys supported them so well last season. Let's do it again this year. Head on in to any Wiener Schnitzel location up there and mention the Take 12 podcast and get a free small soda with any other purchase. That deal was good last year. I haven't cleared it yet with Dom for this year, but I'm just going to roll with it. He yeah. was cool with it last year. He's going to be cool with it again. <laughs> it's fine. He's a chill um, dude. Yeah. He'll be fine. Go on in and mention it. We'll be doing the uh, wieners and toys drive around Christmas again this season. So that'll be happening. And uh, there'll be tons of stuff along the way with wiener schnitzel. So we, we, we got to come up with a better name for that, brother. Uh, what? Wieners and toys? Toys and wieners? <laughs> <laughs> I just say it. Producer Katie originally wanted to call it wieners and toys for kids. I said, you can't do that. <laughs> okay, then yours is actually a better name. Moving on from all that, let's get into our Seahawks. Come on now. Uh, Training camp is well underway. It started last week. Uh, I physically and producer Katie and the team, we flew up to Seattle. We got to go out to camp. We were actually there on day number one of camp. The Seahawks were nice enough to let us close enough to the field to almost smell all of them. Honestly, we were right there, man. And they look great. They look fast. The sun was out on the lake. It felt like summer. It uh, Football season always feels like it takes forever to get here. Then once it's here, it felt like it got here too quickly or something. Um, I'm just stoked, man, to get this season going. The draft picks. Um, where do you want to start with the team? And, I mean, maybe just your general mood. How are you feeling, Lofa, going into this season? I am – Overly optimistic. I was optimistic last year at the start of it when everybody was like, ah, oh, this guy's falling. Mm-hmm. We're going to suck. There were people, there were a lot of haters out there. Oh, yeah. And what did I say? I went right from the beginning. I said, there's no way that John, Pete, and these players are going to let that happen on their watch. And, um, you know, did I expect them to, you know, get five starters out of that draft last year? No, I didn't. And I tell you what, there's probably four or five out of this one that are going to be impact players, um, you know, from day one. So it's to have that kind of excitement. And I think we're still flying under the radar because uh, everybody's, you know, on the Niner bandwagon, right? Right. So, I mean, I get that they're a powerhouse too, but man, I cautiously optimistically guessed nine and eight last year. We finished nine and eight. (laughs) <laughs> do we start with predictions do you even want to go there yet or should we right wait? off the bat you're gonna get I, win loss prediction bring it in hot go, go for it baby all right i'm going 12 and 5 what that's how excited oh, i am right away without even discussing anything yeah man i love it started I, off hot 
I love it, dude. The confidence is sky high. I mean, every, everybody really, uh, somebody described it as uh, people are bullish on the Seahawks this season. Somebody Very. And I, I agree with that. I mean, it, every and they are every year, you know, everybody is. And then we always just got to see how it shakes out. For me, it's, it's going to just be what it is every single season. Even when we had a guy who was in this position consistently almost every year, it's all about the quarterback. I, I, right. I mean, it's the NFL. It's the most important position in sports, yada, yada, yada. And so the team will go how Gino goes and out there at camp. I know it, it for me, when I was there watching, it was just shorts and shirts. And as we always talk about, you can't, who knows how much you can tell, but it looked good to me. He, he looked fast. He's making good reads. He's completing balls. He's yeah, look good, man. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I spent time with the, the Hawks this off season. It's no secret. And um, came away just inc- incredibly impressed with not just, you know, his physical attributes. He throws one of the best footballs I think I've ever seen mm-hmm. with, with whether it's touch, whether he puts, you know, the speed on it, uh, rolling out. He had one that was it had to be 30 yards to the sideline and just it was on a rope. And, and the young guy it was Jackson Smith and Jigba. He caught it. And and tiptoed in just like the one they showed on uh, highlights the other day. So, but his leadership, you know, and he, you know, it looks, he's one of those guys just doesn't get rattled, mm-hmm. you know, um, anytime something doesn't go that the way he expected or the team expected, he comes back, resets himself and, and goes out and just throws another strike or two. It's uh, and then just with the weapons they've given him. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exciting. I know, like, I, I know you're a defensive guy. You're the defensive side of the Which, ball. I know you always like to start with defense, but I'm sitting here and you, you know, because I go offense sometimes. Oh, most yeah. of the time, I like scoring points, and I think this team's going to put up a lot of points, uh, especially with with what they've done around him. Given, like you just said, a JSN. The highlights just keep coming in every day. And they're not just getting posted by like the Seahawks accounts either. Yeah. These are, you know, national outlets are really picking up what this young guy's doing in camp. And he, I mean, he's just, he, well, Lofa, he's burning our own guys, which has got me a little it's, scared. I got to say, well, but we got great guys. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's, that's what, you know, it's, you know, like you, it's good work for our defense. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause we got three number ones. Um, you know, and I, I know it's a stretch to put him as a number one right now, but just he reminds me of a bigger Tyler Lockett. Yeah. You know, huh. um, so, uh, maybe not as quick as him, but his spatial awareness and was something I always talk about when we talk about Tyler, Tyler can take a snapshot of the, the defense. And as he turns to locate the ball, he knows where everybody is and where they're closing. And so one little move, he'll go to the ball, pivot, plant, spin out, and guys just swinging at air. That's he's done it since he got in the league, and this kid has that. And, he, he, uh, he did it to Witherspoon the other day in practice. Lockett did. I, a, yeah, I, I was not surprised. You yeah, know, yeah, I mean, he's that. that's how crafty he is. And but JSN's got that, you think? He does. And then his tracking of the football, like um, another thing that's kind of spatial awareness, where the defender is, where the ball is, trajectory coming down, like the angle he has to get it, attack it at. It's. You, those are very hard things to teach. You yeah. know, I, I'd almost say like, if you asked, you know, Tyler or JSN, like they're like, Oh, I've always done that. And like, yeah. Okay. Well, how do you teach somebody else to do that? I mm-hmm. mean, cause you know, any, any athlete, good athlete, you, you want them to like develop those skills, but some of them just have it innately. And that's what we're talking about these two. And um, so it's going to be fun to watch, but there's three of them. And don't forget the O line is a year more experienced. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they were great. They, and they were they great were with some young talent. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then they've added more, you know, another guy in the draft. Um, and uh, so it's, you know, couple that with those receivers. And then I don't know what a defense, you can't take away everything because yeah. then you give Gino any kind of a running game and, you know, it's high 20s, 30s, 30s a game. Well, one thing that defenses won't have to think about taking away, at least in the first few preseason games, are some of our running backs because they're a little banged up. There's some injuries yeah. in the running back room. It's a deep room. We got we got some depth there, but Kenneth Walker already banged up a little bit. Uh, Charbonnet, rookie, 
has got a something he's dealing with out indefinitely was what I read from Pete. But I, you know, that means I don't, I, what does that even mean out indefinitely? Cause it always makes me think for the season, but it, that's yeah. not what it means. So what does it, that mean? You, know, you always hold your breath when you hear out indefinitely. Right. Yeah. To me, that just means he's out of practice till we figure out what's going on with him. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, they're going to go through the protocol scans, whatever, uh, check out with the, uh, you know, uh, the trainers and, you know, find out what it really is. But I know what, what it's been listed was a groin strain uh, with Walker and then um, a shoulder, which, you know, they, I don't even think we went to pads yet. So yeah. I was going to say, shoulder, how do you got a shoulder for Sharp for Sharps? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, and like, these are two very important pieces uh, to the offense, you know, yeah. and the only silver lining out of this is that, the seventh round pick, Macintosh, mm -hmm. seems to be shining. I, you Dude. you sent me a lot of clips. Of I, I'm sending low for clips every day of this guy because this is the thing. Like my eyes are getting big over here because with these guys out, gives a little bit of a crease and a little bit of a chance to Kenny Macintosh, which a lot of people said he might. Uh, people are saying this he could have been the steal of the entire draft uh, that late for where we got him for, for the, the, the low miles on him and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, he, dude, he, the one video I sent you shirts, shirts and shorts. I know, but yeah, that ball takes two jump cuts to the right and he's gone, man. I mean, he looks quick. I'm just excited. He would have gotten hit on both of those carries at eight yards. Eight <laughs> yards of carry is great. I don't know if he would have broken the tackle. That's Balls what we're, forward, you know, that's nine and a half though. There you go. I'm with you. You know, we're we're staying on the silver lining. But I sent Lofa a, tw a video of Kenny McIntosh running. He goes, "That would have only been an eight yard gain." I said, eight yard gain? I'll take an eight yard gain." But again, you know, the he's a rookie. We don't we don't know if he would have uh, held onto the ball even. Like, just playing devil's advocate here, right? Let me, I'm let's, just let's trying to. The I'm, I'm just trying yes. to. I'm trying to I'm just trying to point out to everybody that Lofa was meh about an eight yard game. Yeah, because okay, there's no pads on. Like, uh -huh. Yeah, it was it was a nice cut. Looks clean when you know nobody's there. Yeah. yeah. I could have ran for eight yards. Right, I'm just saying there's the right. Trey Lance coming out from camp with no pads on. He can't, I mean, he's not doing anything. Macintosh, I'm just saying. You you can look look. If the, the speed is ball, I would look bad in shorts and shirts. That's all I'm saying. Like he looks good. It it not just anyone can look good out yeah. there. He looks awesome. The speed is there. I'll say that much. Yeah. I mean, incredible speed, and that's an element that you always want on your team. So yeah. uh, I'm just excited that he is getting more reps because you know if if we're going to use him, he has to. When those other two guys are in, they're getting every rep. Yeah, first, second, third down, and so. Um, you know, I, I think Walker probably doesn't need as many reps being his second year in the offense. He's still young. And I know coaches are always like, oh, he's got to get more reps. You know, he's only been a year. A year's a long time. Yeah. Especially if you, you're actually, you know, dedicated to craft, you should know the plays and what to do. And it's more getting in game shape is all I'm worried about with Walker. Sharp, I'm going to need to see him get some reps, but I mean, his college tape was insane. He mm -hmm. was running over fools, running past fools. Like it was, you know. Yeah. Impressive. Well, you guys want to see these guys in person this season. You want to go to preseason games, things like that. Check out our sponsor, epicseats.com for all of your ticketing and seating needs. Maybe you already have tickets and you'd like to sell those and offload them. You can do that also at epicseats.com. So whether you're buying or selling, check out epicseats.com. Mention take 12 when you're striking up a deal. Again, whether you're buying tickets and seats from them or whether you're selling your tickets, mention take 12. If you're buying, you get 12% off when you spend 100 bucks. And if you're selling, you get an extra 12 bucks per ticket you sell. So not 12 bucks for the whole deal, 12 per ticket. You got six tickets, that's, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars extra. Or something. <laughs> You'll have to talk to James I, at Epic Seats about my math on that. I'm not sure if that's correct, partner. <laughs> Epic.com. Uh, nobody beats Epic Seats. They got a tagline. Oh, actually, hold on. I got, you know what, Lofa? 
I got some new sound from Epic Seats. Let me see if you can tell us uh, who this spokesperson is for them this season. They got a, they even got a new spokesperson over there also. So you'll hear their tagline, but then you'll hear someone talking. Let me see if you can tell me what local PNW athlete this is right now, okay? Okay. Nobody beats Epic Seats. Sounds just kind of like a guy's voice. <laughs> so good luck. That was it? Yeah. Got a guess? Give me another one. <laughs> All right. One more again. Hold on. Let me. There you go. Nobody beats Epic Seats. I have no idea. Michael Penix. The oh, is future it? Heisman finalist for the UW Huskies, baby. Right on. I've actually never heard Michael talk. <laughs> I don't think I'm not sure if I had either before that. Uh, other than in post-game interviews, I guess. But yeah, the lefty from yeah. Ottawa Lake. He's 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 there with Epic Seats, and we've got that sound. So anyway, Epic Seats, everybody mentioned take 12 and get extra when you're buying or selling, and we appreciate them. Um, sticking with the offense for one second, because uh Noah Fant. Tight end. He passed the physical. He's he's back with the team. Of course, Uncle Will is still there as always. Will Disley, Colby Parkinson, um, at you know eight feet tall, still doing his thing. Um, so tight ends uh, with no, especially with Noah coming back. I mean, add some depth to that room. Had to be excited when you saw that, right? Veteran guy. Yeah, absolutely. He's you know he's still very young, um, explosive, really? you know, athlete, and uh, so. Just getting them all healthy because Kobe's went through some, you know, a couple of things early in his career. Um, and then Will, I think he just missed practice the other day. So just some things to, to keep an eye on. But yeah, um, I think Gino said that was the glue of the group, right? They really hold the offense together, which is pretty cool. You know, they don't they don't get much love. They yeah. don't, you know, I mean, they're, they're tasked with doing the dirty work of blocking. And then, you know, every now and then they get out, but um, to, to get a pass. But it was... Uh, it's just coming together really nicely, this this whole offense. And, you know, I'm a defense guy, so um, it takes a lot for me to say something like that. But the, the tight ends, though, on the Seahawks are kind of a weirdo group, aren't they? Like, uh, personality-wise, I mean. And who started this? Is it Luke Wilson? It, is the ghost of Luke Wilson still at the VMAC influencing the personality of this group? Because they're just kind of a bunch of, like, uh, I don't, weirdos. I'll say it's, it. Like, they're it, goofy. It's a fun group. And yeah. I think, yeah, like they're, yeah, with Luke. They got a funny Jimmy, sense of humor, you know. Jimmy, Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Right? When yeah. They had techno, it was a techno Thursday. That's what they, I'm saying. I think Luke kind of started this whole thing with techno Thursdays and making the tight ends, I don't know. Yeah. What they are uh, today. Yeah. Also, shout out to Jimmy. He just signed back with the, the Saints. Oh, yeah. 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 Shout out. Jimmy G. Um. All right. Uh, the throwbacks. I'm going to talk about the throwbacks and the jerseys before we get to the defense. I'm saving what you really want to talk about for the end. Those throwback jerseys, man. Uh, we've been calling for them for years on this show. You personally have been calling for them. You as well. I think you. I feel like you started this. Bro. Yeah, he did. Uh, if you guys want to give me credit, I'll take it. Absolutely, you're getting credit for this one. You're welcome, Seahawk Nation. Yes. But anyway, the throwbacks are out. What was your first thought when you saw him? Oh, it was awesome. It was just as amazing as everybody imagined. Um, yeah. You know, like it's those colors, man. They're so iconic. It's what I grew up looking at, you know, um, back in the day. And just, I wish I had had a chance to plan them. That's all. Dude, it, when they brought them out, they said how long it had been since they worn them. And it's 20 something years, which made yeah. me feel old as <laughs> hell because when i think about them that's sometimes the uniform they're wearing in my mind's eye and then it hit me that there's like 21 year old punk kids walking around drinking 51 savages that have never seen it <laughs> yeah i think oh one i think oh one was the last wow. year they, they donned them. Yeah. yeah well you I, like you said you never even got the chance in that one no, i don't and they think true was drafted in oh two or oh three oh three yeah. and like he didn't get a chance to wear them uh, yeah i think the you know Walt, Hass, Hutch, um, Tobeck, Chris Gray, some, you, some of the like the old linemen that you know, Mac Strong, of course, of course, right? Mac. Yeah, well, you just named a bunch of them. I was gonna say, what who's the first Seahawk player that comes to your mind when the, you see that throwback? When I see that, the first one that comes to mind is Tez. 
Mm. I mean, just, you know, the unbelievable, one of the greatest Seahawks of all time, just, um, you know, monster. Yeah, um, totally. One of, the, one of the best players that we've ever had. Absolutely. At easily. I mean, mm. you know, I'm giving a lot of UCLA shout outs today. I don't, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't sit right with me. See, but, my, my mind, you know, I go to like, yeah, Dave Craig, Steve Largent. You go to like the old kind of 80s Seahawks. Yeah. But then like you mentioned, though, I mean, Sean Alexander, I can picture him in that oh, form yeah. running at Husky Stadium, by the way, when they were Husky building Stadium. Lumen with like a W in the middle. But there's Sean running wow. over everybody. Yeah, yeah. man. Oh, they look good. And did you did you get one? Did I get one what? A, a shirt did they send you a tatupu one or are you gonna get one of the new team or which player would you go no i got my son has uh a walt jones mm -hmm. which i think actually fits me he's, he's, <laughs> he's hit a growth spurt <laughs> he's over here talking shit real quick story he's over here talking shit he's like i'm gonna be taller than you i was like relax i was the tallest kid in my class at 12 and look where it got me <laughs> you know <laughs> maybe maybe he gets me but i don't know um but yeah i got the walt um need a hass definitely yeah. need a hass yeah and and uh let's see i think essay you know mvp 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 is always good yeah john alexander yeah. yeah the only uh the only mvp the seahawks have ever had the only seahawk to ever get a vote a vote and win it but i mean yeah to even get a yeah. vote right Wow, man. Shout out big time. Um, all right. Defensive side of the ball. Let's get there. I made you wait long enough. Uh, one of the big stories early in camp is Chenna signing his extension, getting paid. Yeah. Congrats. Right. And just looking for another huge season from him. Had a big one last year. Why not just keep this thing rolling? He was the addition last year I was most excited about. And so not just because he went to SC, you know, he is the Trojan, by the mm -hmm. way, for those of us that did not know, um, just, I mean, even when he was, uh, he was in LA, he was balling and they just weren't giving him the reps. Like, you know, like you look up and you'd be like, Oh, like four sacks, five sacks. Then you find out he's only playing like 30% of the snaps is like, okay, just do the math, compute that you give him half or more, like it's up around nine, 10, which is what he finished with last year. So excited for him. Um, he's still super young and I think he's his best football is still ahead of him. He knows that. Um, and just, man, phenomenal athlete. Like I told him, I go, Chenna, you're lucky that I wasn't with the Hawks back when you were getting drafted. Cause I would have moved you to middle linebacker. That's oh, wow. how big, that's how big, strong, fast and instinctive he is. Wow. And he's, he's, and he's just fucking tough, dude. Like, I mean, Chenna is one of the toughest dudes on, on that team. Just unbelievable strength and toughness. So uh, excited for him. But in that room alone, man, him, DT, mm -hmm. um, you know, Hall, that kid's going to be special. Yeah. Um, phenomenal speed. There's just, man, they're stacked. Like, that's the thing that comes to mind when I look. The two position groups that I look at um, is that outside linebacker and the back end. Just, and like, when we were really, really good, you know, when – the Hawks in 12, 13, 14, and 15, when they were at the top of the uh, the food chain, so to speak, they they were stacked at those two spots. So it's exciting, um, you know, and then I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say welcoming home Bobby mm -hmm. is, is really, he just holds it together, man. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think um, it's, it's something that when Brooks gets back, it's going to be, you know, good for him. But I mean, this we're, we're deep, man. We're yeah. rolling deep over there. Well, and, and vets, uh, vets and young guys, you know, like, like Chenna is vet. Obviously you got Bobby vet Quandre on the back. Oh, yeah. Captain Quandre, who's also the like leading reporter for the Seahawks on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. He breaks it. He breaks the stories it, before anybody all the time. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, him and then having uh, love back there to, you know, help him just, with yeah. communication and and then jamal coming back dude like that's what i was gonna okay so yes you just mentioned jamal that's where i'm yeah. going next my buddies and i my seahawk buddies and i we we keep talking about jamal because i don't really hear too many people talking about jamal to be frank like it's he's kind of flying under the radar 
but hopefully coming back and hopefully having a big season, picking up where he was before all of these injuries and setbacks that he's had. Well, I mean, just the amount of different, you know, sub packages you could run with this lineup, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially when you get them into third and long, you got two of three and then, and we, we haven't even seen what Devin Bush can do yet. I'll get there in a second. But (laughs) I'm just, zero. Oh, I mean, he's a stud too. It's like, there's just so many weapons. But when, when I look at like, you get at some point in the season when, you know, we get Jamal back, Brooks back and Bobby, you have three legitimate rushes from inside, you know, and and Jamal can, he can rush from anywhere. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What, come on, what, what are they going to do with Jamal? It, it, you you see the roster. You see, you know the guys they've brought in, things like that. I mean, I don't even know. We we saw him a bit when they first got him, right? And, but that yeah. was years ago. How are they going to use him now? I mean, I would use him in like that Troy Polamalu role, you know? <laughs> Just like, flying I, over the line? Just uh, yeah. over the line right when the ball snapped? Yes. Like, you were going, bro. Like, uh, but you could you could use him. You know, man him up on the tight end. You can use him like rushing off the edge inside. Just there's so many different things that, you know, how how you could use him that it will just give the offense fits in terms of because he he plays the run like a linebacker. Mm-hmm. I mean, when a, when a crease opens, he's shooting through and making the tackle for loss. So the 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 most important thing is that him and Brooks they have to get healthy. And I you know talking from a guy who's had a shit ton of injuries myself. Like I've always came back way too early. Mm. Like they're like, Oh, well, this is the date four months out. You're going to be cleared. Okay. I was like, all right, let's well, circle in three months. I was like, well, fuck that. I'm, I'm going in like, yeah, I'm not missing this. I'm not missing that. And these, they, these guys, they just have to protect themselves from themselves. Like allow, cause the staff does a great job. They do, you know, hold you back until you're ready to cut it loose. But, but you got to be honest with it. And I was never honest with it. And I think, you know, that's that's something that, you know, you got to get over pride-wise and just say, hey, I am not myself right now in terms of what I can physically usually do. So I, I think they have to be honest with that and, and they'll be fine because, but I mean, just the level of talent that is yeah. walking on that field <laughs> on both sides of the ball is absurd, man. Well, Unbelievable. Let's get, let's get to some of the younger talent. Uh, Terry on Twitter asked you uh which rookie on d do you think will surprise us question mark uh she says i'm excited to see or he or she i guess said it says i'm excited to see rookies play august 10th can't think of a better way to celebrate 58 years of life oh happy birthday terry hey happy Enjoy birthday that one. Terry, yeah uh, wh- uh, which rookie do you think is going to surprise us on d on defense i mean the the easy an obvious choice is to say, you know, Spoon because he was the highest pick. And, you know, when you pick a guy that high, it's it's hard not to play him. Right. Like, they're, they're, they're generally, they're ready. But know? hopefully that wouldn't be a surprise, though, because if you're going to take him that high, he should play well. I, I know, but I'll tell you who had the best camp I saw on defense, just most consistent, Michael Jackson. Mm. The, king of, the king of pop <laughs> was balling. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, oh, he was balling, you mm-hmm. know, contestant footballs, contestant throws, breaking up interceptions. Like he was on his shit. So, um, that's going to be a, a, a camp battle to watch because Mike's not giving that up. Like, you know, yeah. and, uh, and he even moved inside a dime. It, it, there's just so many possibilities with this roster, but, um, I'm going to say hall the, uh, the Ooh. edge guy. And I mean, I like that. look, we got, we got Chenna, we got TT, we got Boye, and Boye's been turning heads. Yeah. Now that the pads are on. Mm-hmm. But this kid Hall, you know, and I don't know what it is, but the way he carries himself, first of all, he's a mountain of a man. Like yeah, he's he, a grown ass man for a kid. Like, I don't know what he goes, like six three, maybe a little more, like two fifty-five or whatever, just absolutely yoked. He reminds me and even carries himself and sounds somewhat like Cam Chancellor. Ooh. When Cam, when, when young Cam came to the Hawks in 2010, <sighs> my last year. Yeah. Well, and exciting. well, I mean, and just the, the speed athleticism and, and the, the toughness that he carries yeah. himself with, because he doesn't say too much, much like Cam. He just, he lets the pads do the talking. So I am very excited to see what 
he brings to the table. More questions from Twitter. You guys can go check out Lofa's Twitter account. Um, he's not verified, but just search for Lofa. You'll you'll find him. <laughs> he's on Instagram too. You can go, you can follow us on all social media at Take Twelve Pod. Don't forget the pod part at Take Twelve Pod. Um, another question, Lofa Ben on Twitter asks or just writes defensive line exclamation point and then says, "Can we actually stop the run?" Question mark. That is a valid question. Um, I believe we will. And, you know, it's the one thing I wanted to see probably addressed was an extra D tackle. I think we all did, you know, everyone. And, but, you know, just the draft happens and falls the way it does. And then free agency. Um, I got to believe that Monet is probably you know, not too far out. He might maybe miss the first, go on pup and miss the first five or six games and then be activated in that the next three or four after. But um he's a big piece, no pun intended, to the to the puzzle. Like we are gonna we're gonna need him healthy. Um well, how about Jaron you know, Reed coming back? Looks like he's probably gonna be your starting nose tackle. Yeah. And Jay Jay can play all over that that line. That's that's the the beauty of it because you know this is still the same three four that you know, we didn't have the most success against the run last year. I mean, that was where, you know, we were getting attacked. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I, I got faith in, in Clint Hurt and this defensive staff to get it right. And in terms of, you know, if we maybe have to move the line and like that's a, a way to, you know, catch the offense off guard and kind of get it on our terms. Don't let them dictate how they're and where they're going to run. We start slanting and, and just have the linebackers with Bobby and them even Dev are two of the best I've ever seen just reading off of a stunt, whether it's a blitz or anything, if they hand it off and they're just naturally flowing to the ball, like they're a running back without the ball, they're just mirroring the running back. They're two of the best I've seen. So, um, and they're very aggressive. So that's, that's really what we we were missing last year at that second level was the, you know, go get it. And uh, so excited to see it. And, um, and then want to see what this young kid, uh, Cam, Cam Young could do. Um, you know, he was a fourth or fifth round pick. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, he's, he's a big body. And then we did sign from the XFL Austin, uh, Faoli, uh, Faolu, um, and he is, he's probably this, and this is going to sound weird, the smallest 300 and like 25 pounder I've ever seen. Like he, <laughs> he, if that's possible, right. But he's, <laughs> he's like, you look at him and he's standing next to all the guys that are 280 and he looks 280. Like he's in shape like that. Yeah. But then you then you see the weight chart because you know you look at the weight charts and everything. You're like, holy shit, he's almost three hundred thirty pounds. Where? Wait, he, I, I'm I, forgive my ignorance. So where is he playing? Who am I looking for? I, you, you're filling me in on some stuff here. XFL. Oh. What's going on? I think so I got was a new at, favorite camp player right now. You're gonna have to keep once he clears because I think he might be on pop. He had a a little, um, he had a, a scope or something on his knee, a procedure right before the end of uh mini camp and everything so but when he's ready you want to talk about hand violence and like everything that you're like where is you know you were asking about last year yeah you're gonna see it and and shit i haven't even talked about draymond jones who dude, he can so fly. much talent there's so there's, much there's, talent there's, like, on the roster all they gotta do is put it together yeah with the yeah. the big free agent sign that we had from from denver um draymond man he is so strong but he's so oh. athletic that you know it's like pick your poison but um if he wanted to just go straight just run right or straight through he could just do it all day that's 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 how much energy and like power this kid has but <sighs> they, they showed a clip of him the other day just on in one-on-one -on -one pass for us it was like do do look like look like mike b back this in the day man be so fun dude this season's gonna be so fun it's going to be a blast. And it's almost here, too. It's right around the corner. It's just, it's three seasons next week, baby. Oh, man. And then games start up, and, and, and we're going to be doing our thing, you know, you guys. I mean, this season, the Take 12 podcast, Lofa and I, and some of Lofa's former uh, Seahawk legend friends, we're all going to be traveling around just like we did last year to Germany. We're taking four trips this upcoming season. We're going to New York, Los Angeles, Dallas, and Nashville. Those are four, and that's in order, by the way, uh, four away games. So, you know, the Giants, the Rams, the Cowboys, the Titans. 
Uh, all of these trips can be purchased at take12travel.com. They are for sale right now. The New York trip is selling very well. I think we only have a few spots left, so make sure to jump on take12travel.com if you want to come with us uh, to New York City especially. We have airfare discounts available also, Lofa. From our for friends first, at Delta. For some of the first Ooh. people who jump on there, there's still some airfare uh, discounts available. Uh, it gets you $51 off of your airfare, uh, just for your number there. Fifty one number. Delta yeah. said, let's give them 50 bucks off. And producer Katie and I said, 51. How about that? <laughs> so we're negotiating for you guys out there. Yeah. Uh, check out take12travel.com if you want to come with us. And Lofa already said it, but big time shout out to Delta, who is coming onto the pod as an official sponsor this season. <laughs> We are sponsored by Delta Airlines, everybody. I mean, one of the biggest airlines in the world, the best airline, if you're asking me or producer Katie, always comfortable, always, well, I won't say always because they probably don't want me to, but usually on time and drama-free. Delta is the best, everybody. For all your travel needs, check out delta.com. And also uh, the 12, what are they called? The 12 status? Yes. The 12 status. They named it after Seahawk fans. So go check out everything they have to offer and sign up for their 12 status mileage program and all of that. Delta airlines. We appreciate their support. Um, I'm running out of things on my notes here. Lofa. We talked defense. We talked offense. We're talking sponsors. We talked about our trips. What do I got? Oh, I know what I got here. This is the last thing on my notes. Hard knocks. Unless you got other Seahawk stuff, I wrote down hard knocks. Are you excited to go behind the scenes with Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets? I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I don't give a shit. Why like, not? It, I don't care. Like, I don't know. Like, you don't care about what? I, you don't care about I, Aaron? You don't care about the Jets? Oh, no, no. Those guys, they're great oh, dudes. Okay. Okay, yeah. you don't you you, I just, you spend no, too much time behind the scenes. And I played for Robert Salas. So, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I that's you just you took the words out of my mouth. I don't know how many like NFL players watch that. Like, right. They should do a poll because uh, I, I guarantee you no NFL players watch that. Yeah. All right. What about the drama brewing between Aaron Rodgers and the Denver Broncos? <laughs> and why Ooh. can't the Denver Broncos stay out of drama? <laughs> that yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I love it. I love it. You know, I like talking shit about the Broncos, so I'm in, but what's happening? <laughs> they, they can't I, don't, I don't know. I don't, you know, I just, it, it was, it was definitely some, I'd say weird remarks, just like back and forth in terms of like what, like, yeah, they're not even like real division rivals yeah, if, or. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, uh, <laughs> Sean Payton took the job with the Broncos. He came in uh, promptly just out of nowhere, started taking shots at the former coaching staff, just being like, it might have okay. been the worst job in NFL history. That's what he yeah. said. And so, so then Aaron Rodgers said, because uh, Hackett used to coach Rodgers, right? That's yeah. so Rodgers said, hey, keep my ex-coach's names out of your mouth, a la oh. Will Smith at the Oscars. Ooh. He didn't slap him, but he told them. Not yet. And but, so this rivalry. But, but they play week five. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, all eyes are going to be on that game. I'll say that, yeah. that much. So if you're Russell Wilson sitting there, are you like, why, why are we starting? What are we? Don't do that. Like why, beef between coach and quarterback on opposing teams is sort of strange. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's strange. <laughs> <laughs> poor russell's but, gonna be just sitting there like man i'm trying to do my slide workout in the off season i'm trying to get um, ready hey i'm telling you watch out watch out what you see out of russell this year mm. i russell's a dog now yeah and i you know i can see him proof. i can see him flipping the script and you know Finally getting his MVP votes. So yeah, yeah, no, I'll totally. say that much. Well, me too, but he doesn't need any added pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> but, it's like beef that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, who knows? We'll see We'll see where it goes. But, I, I mean, that that was more exciting than hard knocks, though. Like, I mean, mm. I, I don't even think what it was like Saul and them, they didn't even want to be on hard knocks, right? No, no, no definitely not. But anywhere yeah. Aaron Rodgers was going to go, they were going to follow with cameras. 
I wonder how they set that up. Like, cause they say like, Oh, these five teams are eligible. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. I don't know. No, nah, I think they were just waiting to see wherever Aaron went I mean, with, without Tom in the league anymore. You know, they're all, they're all gone. You know, the quarterbacks of, of, of yesteryear, Peyton and Drew, mm-hmm. Tom, you know, Aaron's basically the only one left. So yeah, you can follow him anywhere. What else do I got before we get out of here? Oh, I w- Simply, Simply Seattle. They're back again. Simply Seattle. Everybody yes. will be doing our score prediction challenge all this season. So shout out to them. They're back again. What were you saying? I cut you off. I wonder if Seattle will ever do a hard knocks. Ooh, they haven't done one yet. No, no. Ooh, real quick. Shout out from the Latin America Seahawkers who are watching us on Twitch. Oh, see what's up. Or I, I should say uh K Paso. Oh yeah. I just said C. Yes. Lofa's going to be going on the Latin Seahawkers. Yeah. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hit the theme song, but we're going to let it run because the last, last thing to do on this first episode of take 12 for this season is to give away a throwback Jersey. We mentioned them earlier in the episode. The throwbacks are out. They're hot. We will buy a Bobby Wagner Jersey for some lucky listener out there. You guys have been entering the contest. You guys have been emailing in. We've gotten hundreds of submissions on this one. Thank you guys for getting in on it. Producer Katie drew a winner at random before we even started, but has been keeping it a secret. Producer Katie, would you like to announce the winner of our first contest this season? Yeah. They'll be taking home the throwback Bobby Wagner jersey in all of its beautiful glory. We'll send it out to him. Who was it? There it is. Drake Waterstein. Maybe I shouldn't say his last name. At Drizzy for Rizzy. <laughs> Drizzy for Rizzy. Congrats. <laughs> Congratulations, Jake. You win a Seahawks throwback. We'll get in touch. If Drake doesn't get in touch, somebody else will win. Yeah. And we got contests and all kinds of fun stuff going on all season right here on Take 12. Um, Katie and I collected a bunch of stuff out there at Seahawks training camp because they let us go into all these spa- places that I don't even know if we were supposed to go. <laughs> so Katie and I just started grabbing stuff and we got a whole grab bag full of Seahawks training camp camp swag yeah. that I think will be our second contest. So follow us online at take 12 pod for all those details. And we'll probably be giving more stuff away on future episodes, but for now, We'll say adios, (laughs) and we'll come back next week. Lofa, anything else? Nah, partner. All right. Break break it down. Breaking it down, hands in the middle, everybody. Good practice, good first episode. Oh, man. Um, Let's see. Preseason starts next week. Uh, Veterans, rookies. I don't know. What do you want to break it down to? You're our football player around here. You break it down. It's going to be a great year. All right. I see a great one on the horizon. I mean, wait, wait, what season is this for us? Is this three or four? Well, I've been saying four. I, Am I wrong? Honestly, it feels as good as the first time to me. <laughs> no help. I think it's this is <laughs> four. four. Four? Season four. Man. Is four. underway. We're just going to go championship on three. One, two, three. Championship! Championship.